Hello, and welcome to our guided hike up the Pu'upi Trail. Before we get to the actual trail, I wanted to go over some of the interesting plants and fungi that we saw on our way. The official trail hut is a little ways in from when you get off the road, but on our way there, we managed to find a really nice cluster of Microporus athenis, which is a shelf fungus shown here. After stopping to look at the mushrooms, we then proceeded to the trailhead. Hello, welcome to the Pu'upia Trailhead. We're just a short 10 minute drive from the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Today we're here, we're here to observe the biodiversity of the forests of Hawaii and to talk about the invasive species. As we walk through the lower elevations, we can see the octopus or umbrella tree, named as such as its leaves spread out in an umbrella-esque pattern. As this area is very wet, there's a plethora of different mosses that can be observed. I wanted to see here, check that out. It's always cool to see the, I mean, in addition to the diversity of plants, it's estimated that there's an even greater diversity of fungi. So to be able to see as many of seeing as many plants that we're seeing would just imply that there's all variety, a whole manner of different fungi in the area. We were able to observe a lot of fungi on our hike due to it having recently rained. The downside of this, however, was that the trail was rather muddy. As we continue, we'll pass by a number of eucalyptus trees, including rose apple and paper bark. These eucalyptus trees are introduced and have varying degrees of invasiveness. Here we can see another example of the umbrella tree mentioned earlier. As we continue, it's worth noting to take a look at the surrounding trees, as at multiple points of the hike, there will be shifts in the dominant trees. I think it's worth mentioning that despite the abundance and variety of eucalyptus present, they are all introduced. Coming up on our right is an example of a paper bark tree. You can see the bark is peeling off in a number of places. Part of the reason that introduced and invasive species are so successful is due to the decimation of the native plants by various introduced animals. The rats, the two species that have been introduced and since hybridized, have done a number on the forests, 
and are responsible for the destruction of many seeds belonging to the native plants found in the forest. In addition to the rats, pigs and cattle are also responsible for the destruction of plants across the islands. Both are able to disturb the soil, pigs by rooting around, and digging up seeds and dis causing other soil disruptions that make it difficult for the native plants to grow, and cattle for their grazing habits where they consumed a lot of the slower growing plants and plants that were just lower to the ground. As we continue along, we'll pass by some small patches of ferns and a small stream, which was quite muddy when we passed by. Coming up on the left is a rather magnificent tree fern that we saw as we hiked. And thought it was very worth noting to take a good look at. As we take a closer look, you can see the sori on the underside of the leaves where the spores of the fern are located. We continued on being careful with our footing as the area in this part of the hike was rather rocky and covered in the roots of the nearby plants. As we continue on up, you can see that the variety of eucalyptus has shifted to be a different species. You can note this most easily by change in bark texture and pattern. This area is right along the border of where the tree line starts to shift. And so if we look around, we can see where these trees start to change. As we continue, we pass by a lot of areas with these raised roots which are really good for holding water, though they make traversing the area rather difficult. As we continue along, we get more of these raised roots and more of the eucalyptus growing on the sides of the trail. This particular variety has a more reddish bark than the kind that we encountered earlier in both parts of the hike. This is this I do recognize. This is Uluhe. It's a fern. Quite recognizable from its branching pattern. If you see each leaf is it's it's kind of has a branching pattern that repeats itself. It's a natural fractal pretty much. It just kind of expands outwards. It's quite beautiful and can grow to be quite large.
as we continue past the Uluhe, where you come to some larger representatives of the eucalyptus trees that we saw earlier. This is not the red variety, though. This is the variety with the deep bark pattern. This area of the hike was a noticeable elevation change from before and a noticeable flora change as well. As we come up here, we'll see a lot more Uluhe and some of the native species, namely Koa. Coming up here along the side is that Uluhe I mentioned, and a little further in we will start to see a lot more of the koa trees. Arriving at the top part near the end of this hike I think was very amazing as I was not expecting to see such a large field of Luhe accompanied by various koa trees. You can really see how much of this fern is grown in this particular area. Uh, right up towards here on this kind of ridge that we're hiking across. It's really something when you're able to, to see these areas where the fern and the other plants can have grown more or less unhindered from the other more invasive or introduced species. These invasive or introduced species are a product of both times humans have colonized the islands. Really, we have had a profound impact on the ecosystems present in these islands. I'd like to thank you for joining me on the guided hike of the Pu'upia Trail.